DuPont is a company you may not have heard of, but it's hard to imagine you haven't heard of some of their notable inventions, including Freon, Kevlar, Nylon, and Teflon. They have consistently ranked as one of the biggest chemical companies in the world for roughly 200 years, but its inception may surprise you. It was created by Eleuther Irene de Pont Nemoir after he and his family fled from the threat of the guillotine in the French Revolution. But the path from small gunpowder mill to worldwide chemical conglomerate was far from an easy one. This is the story of DuPont's founding, and this is Learn Something New. Eleuther Irene Dupont Nemois was born in Paris on June 24, 1771, to a distinguished family whose network included King Louis XVI, Thomas Jefferson, and many scientists and academics, including one particular chemist named Antoine Lavoisier. From an early age, Dupont didn't really care for academics and excessive schooling, but what he did find extremely fascinating was gunpowder. And this interest is what propelled him into further schooling, entering into the Royal College in Paris at the age of 14, and taking an apprenticeship under Lavoisier in the manufacturing of gunpowder for the French government. It was here he not only learned more about gunpowder, but also gained knowledge of other subjects like botany and agriculture, sparking other passions that he would carry with him for the rest of his life. But when a few years passed and he left his apprenticeship to take over management of his father's publishing company, he stopped keeping up with the literature behind gunpowder. It simply wasn't pertinent to him anymore. Instead, his focus shifted to things like getting married to his wife, Sophie Madeleine Dalmas, whom he had to fight in two separate duels before her father agreed to let him marry her, which he did in 1791, going on to eventually have eight children with her. The 1790s were a devastating time for France, however, as the extraordinarily deadly French Revolution kicked off. The French Revolution saw tens of thousands of people brought before the guillotine. Dupont, taking after his father before him, actually supported the French Revolution, believing that it was not in France's best interest to keep its monarchy in place. However, as I mentioned earlier, their family did have connections to the king. In fact, he and his father were two of the people who physically stood before King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette to protect them from a mob sieging the Tuileries Palace in Paris on August 10, 1792. But as things got more chaotic within the city, supporting a peaceful deplatforming of the king became exceptionally dangerous. Shortly after trying to protect the king, Dupont's father's home was invaded by an angry mob of revolutionaries who wanted to try and take the family to the guillotine but they managed to escape, deciding it would be best to flee the country altogether, moving all the way to the United States. Arriving in America on January 1st, 1800, the DuPont family would settle in a spot on the Brandywine Creek in Delaware. After getting settled down, DuPont found himself going on a hunting trip in the Delaware wilderness, when he found that the gunpowder that was being made in America was nothing at all like the stuff that he made in his youth for France. Not only was it worse quality, but it proved to be prohibitively expensive. After looking into it more extensively, he found that the United States was in desperate need for gunpowder like that of which he had made back in his home country. And he wasn't the only one that thought so. Thomas Jefferson, who had initially met with the DuPont family during his time as minister to France, basically an ambassadorship during the American Revolutionary War, was an emphatic supporter of the DuPonts going into the gunpowder business and he was personally overjoyed to learn of their relocation to the United States. Jefferson made sure that DuPont knew that if they were going to be making their gunpowder at a higher quality and cheaper than anything currently on the market, which mostly was sourced from Great Britain still, they would have at least one customer in the form of the United States government. Alexander Hamilton, on the other hand, also became a big supporter of DuPont providing legal assistance to him as he tried to get around some of the Delaware laws which restricted people who recently moved to America from owning land, helping him with the legal side of purchasing and building up Eleutherian Mills, establishing the company in 1802, the same year that his father decided to move back to France to work under Napoleon's rule, and would eventually become part of the government that in 1814 would exile Napoleon to Elba. But getting back to DuPont in America, he was still having a fairly difficult time with his startup. Sure, Thomas Jefferson would make good on his word and ask the Secretary of War to place orders for gunpowder with the DuPont company, the first order being 22,000 pounds of powder to use against pirates, 
but despite experiencing significant growth up to and beyond events like the War of 1812, the company was carrying substantial debts, including loans to pay for pensions of widows and orphans of 40 workers who were killed in a factory explosion in 1818. Even with this, DuPont was quickly becoming America's leading manufacturer of gunpowder, something that was desperately needed as people were using guns for hunting as a means of survival, for the fur trade, and for defense. During the War of 1812, DuPont provided a staggering 1 million pounds of gunpowder to the United States military, and even brought together their own private military to protect themselves in case the British tried to attack their factories. And although the militia was never used, the significance of DuPont was preceding the spread of its reputation. And as demand grew, so did their manufacturing space buying more land, opening more factories, and making more and more of the explosive powdery substance. In 1834, however, Eleuther Irene Dupont contracted cholera, and on October 31st of that year, at Eleutherian Mills, he would pass away. Though despite dying from what many called the poor man's disease, when he died, his company was one of the biggest in America, making around 1 million pounds of gunpowder every single year. And he would pass the company to his sons, Alfred and Henry Dupont. And the site of his original gunpowder mill in Delaware was declared a National Historical Landmark in 1966. This was far from the end of the story, however as under his son's leadership, the company would see several booms in business because of events like the California Gold Rush, the construction of transcontinental railroads, especially after acquiring the manufacturing rights for dynamite from Alfred Noble, as well as needs for gunpowder like the 1853 Crimean War and the American Civil War. Though during the Civil War, as a hardcore Unionist, Henry DuPont fought for no powder to be sold to the Confederacy or any Confederacy sympathizers. Though over the course of the war, $110,000 worth of gunpowder would be seized from DuPont couriers by Confederate soldiers. As time went on, however, gunpowder wasn't enough for the company. They were flush with cash and wanted to expand their merchandise lines. They began buying out other companies, first just other rival gunpowder companies, then explosive companies like those that made dynamite, then other types of chemical-based companies. DuPont was becoming bigger than ever, but the United States government was getting ready to target companies that seemed like they were getting too big. Throughout their time in the early 1900s, they were coming up with new chemicals like Freon, used for refrigerators, neoprene synthetic rubber, nylon, Teflon materials, Mylar, and eventually Kevlar. But by the middle of the century, other companies became squeezed out or acquired, and there was an outcry about the lack of competition. So in 1962, the government forced DuPont to sell off 37% of its General Motors stake under the Clayton Antitrust Act. Throughout the latter half of the 1900s, the company would be fraught with PR disasters that made the 228 workers dying from gunpowder manufacturing explosions seem small in comparison. Freon, which was developed to be used in refrigerators, was banned as it caused massive depletion in Earth's ozone layer, protecting the surface from UV radiation and its most damaging effects. Also, leaded gasoline, which was a known poison to humans at the time it was made, which was made at General Motors under the ownership of DuPont. Oddly enough, both of these chemicals, seen as some of the most harmful chemicals in the world in retrospect, for their wide-spanning effects, were invented by the same guy, Thomas Midgley Jr. DuPont was a company born from a family fleeing persecution in their country, and trying to bring the best aspects of that country to leave the one they settled in better than they had arrived. But over time, their excessive need for growth seemed to have led them into trouble time and again. Whether it's rushing Freon out to cash in on refrigerators, or to cover up the harmful effects of lead and gasoline, or simply buying out anyone who tried to rival them, good intentions seem to have been set aside in the pursuit of the almighty dollar. Thank you for watching Learn Something New. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks again, and as always, I will see you in the next one.